Thanks so much, Chairman Mendelson and members of the committee. I'm Erica Williams. I'm executive director of the DC Fiscal Policy Institute, where we shape racially just tax budget and policy decisions to advance an anti-racist equitable future. Mayor Bowser's proposed budget cuts vital lifelines for DC residents struggling to make ends meet and backtracks on existing commitments aimed at advancing racial justice. It hits the pause button on key initiatives to end homelessness and prevent eviction and pulls back on affordable housing. It ends baby bonds and cuts other programs critical to ensuring struggling residents aren't left behind and instead locks in spending that benefits commercial developers. DC FPI stands in solidarity with others here today calling for the council to restore funding for ERAP, excluded workers and baby bonds, among other things and that are laid out in my written testimony. My remarks today are gonna to focus on the housing and downtown abatement. Tax abatements often go to companies already prepared to engage in a particular business activity, subsidizing that activity that would have happened anyway and without much benefit, as has been borne out by national research. And while the shock of the pandemic created an incredible level of uncertainty, DC is arguably only just emerging from that crisis. And it's not at all a foregone conclusion that the extreme necessary shift to remote work is permanent. If demand for commercial property remains low or worsens and developers conclude it benefits their bottom line, then conversions to residential or mixed use properties will happen without public subsidy. Some have already happened. In fact, one analysis shows that DC led cities across the nation in office to residential conversions between 2020 and 2021. Some have pointed to Noma as a shining example of tax abatements working, but the district government has not done an analysis showing a causal relationship between the abatements and housing production in that neighborhood. And in fact, it's far more likely that the New York Avenue Metro station served as the major catalyst, as well as the federal government's efforts to bring thousands of federal employees to new headquarters near the stop. We urge the council to reject exemptions from key equity provisions in the abatement. This means maintaining current affordable housing requirements, first in source hiring requirements, and TOPA rules for residential properties. It sets a very dangerous precedent to eliminate for a small and powerful interest group key equity provisions required by others to receive public subsidies. We ask you to reject the costly 600% increase to the abatement cap in FY 2028. Our estimates show the abatement could cost us over $900 million over the next two decades. We ask that you add safeguards to the program, including a clawback provision for developers that fail to comply with the equity provisions and a five-year sunset on the program. And finally, we ask you to consider converting the abatement into a capital loan program along the lines of our Housing Production Trust Fund, which would be more transparent, force developers to compete, and better ensure that the award matches what's needed to make the project work. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I'm happy to answer any questions.